Hey there guys, it's Ramsey, your girl behind Homegirl Cookies. I love it when I get requests for wildflower sets and I usually hand paint or watercolor them to avoid mixing all of those colors, which can be tedious as you know. Um, and I wanted to show you in this video just how easy it is to hand paint these beautiful flowers. So if you're interested in following along, I'd love for you to j see just how easy it is. So first, I flooded these three cookies off camera, let them dry completely. As you can see, they've got some air bubbles in them, but I was not too worried about that part because I knew it was gonna get covered up um, by what I'm doing now and by, with the gel colors that will be painted on top. So this is just brown edible petal dust from Wilton that I picked up at Walmart. And I'm dusting it on the background or on the base of the cookie, the base of the dry cookie, just to create kind of like a dusty, vintage -y background for the flowers, almost kind of like they're in a field, I guess. I just like this look. You could totally skip it if you wanted to, but I like giving the background kind of a little bit of a shaded look. And you can go as light or as heavy as you want. As you can see in that middle cookie, I kind of did a little bit of a heavier streak, which is okay. It's going to be kind of hidden anyway. It's not a big deal. Um, but I went a little heavier around the edges just to kind of give a shadowy effect as you can see and then just um, lightly scraped through the middle. So first up we are going to paint this blue cotton ball looking wildflower. I'm not sure what else to call it. <laughs> um, but if you would like to freeze this video and take a screenshot of this picture to project down onto your own cookie sets, please feel free. I would love it if you would tag me in it. That would be so much fun. I made these designs a while back and saved them to use and I've used them in a lot of different sets. But for this design, we're gonna use avocado for the leaves, a little bit of royal blue mixed with Wedgwood for the flower and some bright white for highlights. You'll also need some good paint brushes. I like to use these small bristled brushes um, for finer details. I use them in almost every single design I paint. You'll want some paper towels, a bowl of clean water, your dry cookie of course, and then a paint palette. I got this from Dollar Tree. It comes in like a set of three I think to hold your food gels. And the first step I do usually for these wildflowers when I want these designs, I project my photo down that I used on a set a while back. Um, and I use this just to kind of get the placement of the leaves and the flower petals and that sort of thing. And then I move away from the projector to add all of the finer details like highlights and lowlights. So you'll see me work away from the projector here in a little bit. But while I'm using this image, again, I'm just using it to get the placement on the cookie for the leaves and such. I'm dipping my paint paintbrush into just the tip of it into some avocado green and I am making just some I'm basically just kind of like coloring with my paintbrush there's really no way to mess it up you just kind of brush on some gel and then dip your paintbrush into some water dip off the excess water on some paper towel that's important and then you just take that water and kind of blend out the gel uh, food color that you laid down on your cookie and that's going to create some variations um, Some shade variations within that one avocado green color and it's going to really look cool once your cookie dries Make sure you do not lay down too much food gel at a time or too much water at a time Because that can result in eating away the base layer of your cookie You do not want that to happen because that's just a big old mess and um, to avoid that, once again, just dip the tip of your brush into um, the food gel at a time and just go back as needed. It's always better to lay down less than more at first because you can always go back and add a little bit more if you need it. Um, and don't put too much water down at a time. So now that I have the placement of my leaves in avocado green, I'm gonna go back and dip my paintbrush. Um, I'm gonna kind of alternate through that royal blue and that Wedgwood. And I'm not gonna do brush strokes or color here. I'm going to blot because I want it to have like kind of that cotton ball effect. So I'm just blotting right here. And again, you see how easy this is? You really can't mess it up and it's totally fine if your placement doesn't match your projected image perfectly because 
leaves and wildflowers are perfectly imperfect, right? <laughs> So like I told you before, now is the portion where I work away from my projector so that I can see it better. I'm just going in and adding in some um, extra green for some um, further shaded spots. And then um, j just to kind of, you know, make those leaves a little bit more defined. I'm, that's, that's why I'm doing this. And then in a minute, you'll see me go in and add some white in places just to add a little bit of highlights. And this is, again, just to further define your flower and um, give it a little bit of depth and dimension. I'm sorry for the bad reflection on some parts of this cookie. I had to paint this at night when my kiddos went to bed, this tutorial. So I needed some pretty bright light to be able to see what I was doing and it ended up reflecting poorly off some parts of this um, video. So sorry for that. Here comes some of that bright white that's going to be blotted in on top of the blue areas and this is just to create you know some extra variation up there and some highlights and here is the finished product for this particular design I usually let this sit out for several hours probably overnight to dry and even spray it with a little edible glitter so it shines and looks really pretty the next design we're gonna do is this Black Eyed Susan little wildflower cluster. And again, if you wanna freeze this and um, take a photo of it and use in some of your sets, please feel free to do so. For this design, we're gonna bring in the same avocado green for the stems. And then for the petals, we're gonna use a little bit of lemon yellow and some gold. And for the center of those flowers, we're going to blot down some chocolate brown. And for that one single flower in the cluster, we're going to use a little bit of dusty rose. We're also going to use some bright white in here, which I forgot to show. But just like the image before, we're going to project it down first onto our dry cookie to get the placement of the green. And just as we did before, you're just going to kind of trace it out very, you know, roughly you don't have to it doesn't have to be perfect at all and um, I'm just using some gel food color here not water yet just a little bit of gel to get the placement of the leaves and then I'm going to dip my paintbrush into some water to blend out the green areas that I did and that's going to create that green variation uh, shades of color And if you don't have a projector, you could totally get away with freehanding wildflowers. Like I said earlier, they are so imperfect. Their placement is kind of all over the place. So you really couldn't go wrong with um, freehanding this at all. Okay, now that I have the placement, um, rough placement of my greenery added, I'm gonna take some lemon yellow and start working on the placement of my petals. And once again, you know, there's no solid shape to wildflowers. So you'll see me kind of move away a little bit from the exact projected image here for the petals. And that's totally fine. And once again, you might wanna put a fan in front of these to let them dry overnight. This food gel and hand-painted cookies take quite a bit of time to dry fully so that they don't feel tacky when you package them. If you wanna even dust a little cornstarch over them before you package them, that's great too to help prevent any sticking during that process. So here is that one little pink flower and I'm just blotting down some um, dusty rose and then taking a little bit of water and just kind of spreading that upwards in an upward motion. Um, and that's gonna create kind of an ombre <laughs> effect as well, like some of these flowers have when you add water to the food, food gel.
And here comes that blotting motion again, except this time with chocolate brown for the center portion of those yellow Black Eyed Susans. So now comes the portion without the projector. And once I turn the projector off, you can see it kind of looks a little wonky, but again, that was just to get our placement. And now we're gonna go in and add our little highlights and lowlights to add some depth and dimension. And to start with that, I'm gonna take a, some gold on the tip of my paintbrush and go over the tips of the petals a little bit. And um, I'm gonna brush that upwards just a tiny bit and take a little bit of water to blend out that gold so that the flowers have a little bit of um, shaded portions to them for some dimension. And here I wanted a tiny bit more variation in the shades of green around my leaves. So I'm just picking up a little bit more of that avocado green and going around um, the edges a little bit. There's that bad reflection again, I apologize. It won't be on every cookie, but it's kind of shining down badly on that one leaf. Um, so just, like I said, just pick up some more food gel and go around the edges and just kind of blend it out with a tiny little bit of water if you want some extra depth. You can blend out that uh, uh, center portion, that chocolate brown center portion a little bit more just to make it a little more defined. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit of bright white here in a second to that area as well for some highlights. And there we have our hand painted design number two. And last up, we have this pink feathery wildflower design. Um, and this is probably, honestly, the easiest design of the three. For this, we're gonna bring back in our trusty avocado shade for the green stems. And then we're gonna use Dusty Rose for the feathery portions of the wildflower and some bright white for some highlights on the pink areas. And I think you know the drill by now. Shine down that projected image of the um, design just to get our placement of the green areas and the pink areas. And once again, you can totally freehand this, but just for uh, tutorial purposes, I decided to use the projector way. And once the food coloring is down, once again, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of water to blend out those areas to create some variations in the shade. And for the pink, it's that blotting motion again. Oh my goodness, it's so easy. You want the darker portions of the dusty rose to be at the base of the flower where it's thicker and then you just kind of blot upwards as the gel runs out on your um, paintbrush. And it creates, again, the variation in that pink shade. Okay, and the projector goes off and this where I this is where I come in and make it a little bit more defined in areas that I see could be darker or lighter or more blended with some water that sort of thing
And this is actually the first time I have picked up that very, very thin, fine detail paintbrush I'm holding right now with the white handle. And I'm just winging out some of the greenery here. I wanted to take up a little bit more room on the cookie. So I'm just using this to make very thin, wispy uh, greenery stems coming off of the main ones. And you know how you wing out your eyeliner? It's kind of the same concept here, just with food gel. And there you have our final hand-painted wildflower design. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and are ready to tackle your own beautiful hand-painted wildflower sets. Have a great day, guys.